What's up guys, my name is Asia, I am The Basic Christian. We are in episode two of our Wives Are Weapon series, and today we're talking about the forging of a katana, how it's created, and how it relates to our single season. Episode one is already live. We are in episode two, like I said. I'll put a clip in here, and I'll also put the card up here somewhere. Watch this. So let's go back to 14th century Japan. There was a master swordsmith called Hanjo Masamune. So Masamune became famous because he forged katanas. There was a whole bunch of other people who were swordsmiths, but because of his technique, he became world renowned for what he did and how he built his swords. If you are a single woman being prepared for marriage, you are being made a weapon. If you are a wife who is already married, who is drawn closer to God, God is making you a weapon. You are meticulously crafted by your creator so when your husband finally gets his hands on you he will be fully equipped to go to war so let's get right into it japanese sword making is called gokuden and masamune had that process and it has nine separate steps to it those nine steps could take anywhere from a week to a couple months for each step so the first step that i want to pull out of the gokuden process is purifying the steel masamune would work the steel he would heat it and he would fold it he would heat it and he would fold it and as he did that he would work out the impurity and the more impurities that got worked out, the stronger the steel was. You wouldn't have weak spots in it. And that's exactly what Jesus does in our single season. He works out all the things that are in us that can't go into a marriage. So that includes our pride. That includes our idolatry. That includes all the old habits, the complaining, the addiction, everything that you built up and spent years in sin. He's got to work that out before he gives you to one of his sons. Let's look at scripture. We're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 through 16. The Bible says, Be holy in everything you do, just as God is holy. He is the one who chose you. In the scriptures, God says, be holy because I am holy. So in this section of scripture, Peter is telling us that we are called to a life of holiness. Once we receive salvation, Jesus wants us to look like him. So that means we have to keep allowing him to heat us and work us and do all the things that it takes to prepare us for what he has next. But the problem is most people don't want to be purified. So they don't want to go through that heating process and the folding process and get those impurities worked out of them because sin is fun. But Jesus is not going to give us to one of his sons just so we can contaminate him. But Jesus says, I want to do a new thing in you. I want to make you whole. I want to clean you up. I want to get off all that residue from that past season, from all that abuse, from all that neglect, from how people used you. I don't want that on you. I want to make you brand new. And it doesn't matter what Jesus wants if you don't surrender. He wants to do all that for you, but will you let him? So after purification, I want to look at forging. Forging is where they take a low carbon steel and a high carbon steel. They put them together and they beat them together until they become one. And what that does is cause the sword to be stronger and less likely to break. And when Jesus gave his life up, he gave us the Holy Spirit. He made us one with the Holy Spirit. Let's get into scripture. I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 6, 17. The Bible says, but anyone who is joined with the Lord is one with him in spirit. So remember the church of Corinth back then was like going to Vegas and Paul is writing to the church and telling them about sexual immorality and how it's bad don't do it but I think it correlates to our single season because whoever we unite with that's who we become bound to and that's why we can't be out here giving ourselves to a bunch of random people because God has to work all of that off of you and out of you before he can give you to one of his sons sexual immorality will delay you so the more random people you have sex with the more people that you give yourself to that's the more work that God has to take you through and the more processing God has to do to get that off of you and get that out of you because you're being bound to those people girl that's not your husband don't be sleeping with these men hold yourself wait for your man wait for your husband that God has for you it will be worth it you're creating sexual bonds with strangers and it's delaying your process what you want is on the other side of purity it's on the other side of what God has for you it's not going to be in your own decisions God wants to do more than you can ever ask think or imagine but it's going to mean that while we're single we have to honor him with our bodies too now I'm not a virgin and I am not pointing the finger at you for you not being a virgin. What I'm saying is that Jesus died to clean us up. Jesus died to set us free. He gave his life so we could have more than what we've been given ourselves. And that's why Paul says that whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit because he's repairing all the broken places that we've created and that other people have created for us. And that doesn't just go for sex. It goes for every other aspect of life. Everything that you've been through will be repaired, will be redeemed and will be renewed. 
And drawing closer to Jesus allows the Holy Spirit to work in you. And the more the Holy Spirit works in you, that's the more fruit you bear. The more fruit you bear, the stronger you are. And just like the katana, that is the more difficult you are to break. Jesus doesn't want you operating out of a deficit. He doesn't want you weak and fragile. He wants you strong. He wants you unbreakable. He wants you living out of overflow. But you can't do that if you don't give up and allow him to forge you. You have to let him be God. You got to let him lead. You have to let him take over and let him have his way. That's the only way you're going to fix any of this. So after forging, the last step that I want to cover is the final inspection. And the final inspection is done by the master swordsmith, which for us, it's Masamune. So in that inspection, the swords have to be sharp. They have to be strong. They have to be beautiful. And the final process, they do a test cutting. It's called Tameshigiri. Remember that you're a wife before you meet your husband. So strong wives have a strong ability to use their authority. They have a strong ability to cut. They have a strong ability to overtake the enemy at every turn. This is all developed in whatever your ministry is and whatever God has called you to do, whatever Jesus has put in your heart to accomplish is developed in the single season. So don't be surprised if you're tested on your way out of your single season because the Lord wants to show you what you're made of. He wants to show you how strong he's created you to be and the things that you can handle. And when you take your single season seriously, Jesus will shine through you. Let's look at scripture. I wanna go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, when anyone is in Christ, it's a whole new world. The old things are gone and suddenly everything is new. So you started suffering, but now you're a saint. You started abandoned, but now you're redeemed. You started broke, but now you're an heir. Jesus gets glory from you coming out and he wants to see you win. So after a Masamuna Katana passes its final inspection, it's gifted to a chosen samurai. And I found it interesting because samurai in English means one who serves. But while we're single, we have to focus. We have to allow Jesus to purify us, to forge us, and to inspect us, to make sure that we have the fruit that we need to get into the marriage that he wants to give us. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Asia. I am The Basic Christian. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and share. Leave a comment. Let me know how you like this. And in the next episode, we're going to talk about pairing the katana with the chosen samurai. See you in the next episode.